Hi everyone! My name is Renata and welcome to my channel. Have you ever had some nice images but you still wanted to boost them a bit, upgrade them a bit? If the answer to this question is yes, stay with me because I will show you a little trick to make your images just a bit more special. First of all, I will be creating this page in the Stamperia Stone Paper Journal because I have planned to use sprays and a lot of water and this paper handles it beautifully. But uh, let me first show you where my inspiration came from. This beautiful paper pad is from Alchemy of Art, Between Worlds collection, and I have already fussy cut a couple of images, as you will see here. Recently I have created another page using exactly the same paper pad, but the page ended up in quite a different style. And if you are curious, I will leave you the link for that page too, because I used some similar techniques and mediums, but it turned out quite differently. Anyway, here I was just kind of pre-planning my layout, but now that I have some general idea, I will start working on my background. Here, as you can see, I am trying to protect my previous pages, because I know I can be sometimes quite messy when working with sprays. All the sprays that I will be working with for this project are from the Lindy's Stamp Gang collection, and I will, as usually, leave the list for all the sprays that I have used in the description box down below. And here you can see that I'm trying to pre-wet my pages, doing it quite a silly way, as you can see, using the smallest brush that I can find. I guess I had a little brain failure, but never mind, it still does what it's supposed to do, just takes a little bit more time. And here I am starting with my first spray. The idea for this project was to use some blues, a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit brownish and greenish tones, but anyway, blue and uh, orange were supposed to be the dominant colors, as uh, they are complementary colors, which means they look really great next to each other. When mixed, these colors give a little bit of brownish tint, but uh, since this was supposed to be a slightly vintage project as well, I was really fine with that. But I still made sure to have some bright orange and bright green on my page as well. Anyway, here you can see me slowly trying to apply these colors, layering them until I achieve the desired result and intensity of the color. The same process I will do on the other corner of my page, but for purposes of this video I will show you only one side. I don't want to bore you after all. Also take note that uh, occasionally I'm cleaning my brush a bit when I get uh, two green tones, which I didn't want to be too dominant on this page. I know this can be sometimes a bit challenging for a beginner, but it takes just a little bit practice and you can do this as well. Occasionally I am using paper towel to pick up uh, this uh, piled up paint. And here I am just taking a little bit of darker shade and applying it directly on the paper, trying to make my edges slightly darker, as I like when my pages have some variation in color depth. Now, for colors to blend even better, I will lift my page and let them slide into each other, a little bit move into each other, because that gives some more natural transitions. Of course, for this to work the best, it was uh, important to privet the page as I did at the start. Now, as I said, I won't bore you with the other corner as I repeated exactly the same process. So we will skip right to the next step, the stenciling. For this, I didn't want to introduce any new colors. So I chose uh, one of the Lavinia element inks and I will use the mermaid color as it is a blue color, which is, as you know, already present on my page. Here at start, I started quite light handedly playing safe but the effect wasn't visible enough, so later on I will put more ink. Maybe a bit too much, never mind. 
it still looks good. Anyway, trying to apply it randomly, going a bit uh, lighter towards non-colored areas. And again, of course, I will repeat the same process on the other opposite corner of the page. But first, I uh, wasn't sure how much I liked the pattern to be so perfect, so I am applying a little bit of clear water to do the ink lift technique. I know on this video it looks like I instantly lifted the color with my towel, but in reality I waited about half minute or so before I lifted the color using my towel. Now again repeating the same process, enjoying, having fun. Oh, and uh, for those of you who are interested, this uh, stencil is from Ciao Bella and it is called Four Points. The ink uh, that I'm using is, as I said, from Lavinia Elements in uh, mermaid color. And the ink blending brush that I'm using is from Studio Light. But you can see all these supplies in the description box down below. No, I decided this not to be the last step for my background, instead I will do some heat embossing. I chose this uh, beautiful, beautiful stamp set from Studio Light. It is called uh, Moonflower <laughs> and I really like it so much. It might be just one of my favorites from Studio Light. Here I am trying to approximate where I will place it, but I wanted the pattern to stand out quite a lot. So I will use opaque bright white embossing powder. But now I will show you something. On uh, this side of my page, I went by the rules and I used the embossing uh, powder tool, embossing powder pillow. Not sure how it's properly called. But on the other side, I will forget to use it and you will see the effects of that. The reason that I am using uh, embossing powder pillow is so that embossing powder would stick only on the areas that I am stamping now and not fly all around randomly. Anyway, as you saw, I tried thoroughly to cover the design on the stamp and I am trying to press it very nicely to get as clear shapes of the design as possible. Of course, the effects now can't be seen and they will be seen as soon as I pour my embossing powder. No, of course I will use my heat gun, but let's speed that up a bit. And I think the result is really beautiful. But now let's move on to the other side. And as you can see, I am skipping the part where I was supposed to use the embossing pillow, powder pillow. And as you can see, I was at one place quite heavy handed with the Lavinia ink, there where the stencil design is more intense. And that is going to be a problem, as apparently the ink didn't dry completely, so my embossing powder won't uh, adhere only to the design of the stamp, but also there where that ink from the stenciling was still somewhat wet. Here you can see what I am talking about. Now, of course, if that bothered me a lot, I could have just taken a brush and swipe off the embossing powder from that area, but the truth is, it didn't bother me at all. But I'm just trying to mention this so you are aware that stuff like this can happen. Anyway, now the time to finally embellish my images. And the way that I decided to do that is using this uh, Pentart uh, glue and metal foil leaves. Now, how does this work? I apply the glue on my images, on the areas that I wish the metal foil to be. 
Once applied, the glue is a whitish color, but when it dries, it becomes transparent. And when it is transparent, it is time to apply your metal foils. Now, of course, for this video, I use the Pantart, but there are other brands that make products like this. Anyway, I applied the glue on my images, but you know what? I was in mood to apply some on my page as well. Mostly trying to follow the lines of my stamped embossed design. Of course, I will do it on both sides of my art journal page. And uh, later on, you will see I added uh, little dots. Here, when I applied the glue with my brush, I applied it in very thin layers, so it was dried almost instantly. But when I applied the little dots, the glue was a bit uh, in bigger amount, actually. So it did take a little bit of time to dry. You can speed up the process with your heat gun. But then try to be careful not to overheat the glue because it will bubble up and then those dots won't be perfect little circles. Just It can be weird a bit, <laughs> not a big problem, but uh, just something to be aware of. Anyway, here you can see me apply those little dots that I talked about and you can see they are whiter than the areas where I applied the glue with the brush. Now I went for lunch and once I was done, the glue was dry. So it was time to apply the metal foil. This time I decided to work with the gold color. And now you will see how it works. First I wanted to embellish my uh, images and I am rubbing the metal foil with the bone folder. And voila, really beautiful little shine effect. Of course, this was uh, just a very tiny surface. Later on, you will see better how this effect looks. It's a bit hard to catch the perfect light, but I hope you can see it a bit. Anyway, I repeated the process on most of my images and of course now on my background as well. There the effect will be more visible, as you can see. I think it really looks pretty. Of course, these metal foils come in various colors, so you can choose what effect you are going for or what kind of mood. Now it was time to assemble my layout. Here, once again, I am a little bit uh, playing around with my elements before I dedicate to the final one and adhere them using a liquid glue. Now the last step was to add a sentiment and for that I chose this Tim Holtz Ideology Small Talk sticker booklet. And that's it for today. I hope you had fun uh, watching me create this project. Hopefully even better maybe you learned something. And of course thank you so much for being with me here today. And have a nice crafty day. Bye!